would shake with you. It is tamida bikum. Shake with you. Indicating if the mountain were not there, if you would have walked, if you would have moved, even the earth would have moved with you. If you would have swayed, even the earth would have swayed with you. And we know normally when we walk on the earth, the earth doesn't shake. And the reason for this is, according to Dr. Frank Press and Dr. Najat, who's from Saudi Arabia, and he wrote a full book on geological concepts in the Quran, answering almost everything what Dr. William Campbell has said in detail. And Dr. William Campbell, in his book, he writes that if mountains prevent the shaking of the earth, then how come you find earthquake in the mountainous regions? I said, nowhere does the Quran say mountain prevents earthquake. Earthquake is the result. And if you see the definition in the Oxford Dictionary, it says, earthquake is due to conversion of the superficial crust of the earth due to relief of compressed seismic waves due to crack in the rock or due to volcanic reaction. The Quran speaks about Zalzala in Surah Zalzal, chapter 99, but here it speaks about Tamida Bikum, to prevent the earth from shaking with you. And in reply to the statement that if mountains prevent earthquakes, how come you find earthquakes in mountainous region? The reply is that if I say that medical doctors, they prevent the sickness and disease in a human being, and if someone argues, if doctors prevent the sickness and diseases in a human being, how come you find more sick people in the hospital where there are doctors than at home where there are no doctors? In the field of oceanology, the glorious Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 53, that it is Allah who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, the other salt and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. Between them, there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Quran says in Surah Rahman, chapter 55, verse number 19 and 20, Marajal al al It is Allah who has let free two bodies of flowing water. Though they meet, they do not mix. Between them, there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Previously, the commentators of the Quran wondered, what does the Quran mean? We know about sweet and salt water, but between them, there is a barrier. Though they meet, they do not mix. Today, after advancement of oceanology, we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. There is a slanting, homogenizing area which the Quran refers to as barzakh, unseen barrier. And this has been agreed upon by several scientists, even of America, by the name of Dr. Hay. He's an oceanologist. And Dr. William Campbell writes in his book, that it is an observable phenomena. The fishermen of that time knew there were two types of water, salt and sweet. So Prophet Muhammad, during the expedition to Syria, he may have gone in the sea, or he might have spoken to these fishermen. Sweet and salt water is an observable phenomena, I agree. But people did not know that there was an unseen barrier until recently. The scientific point to be noted here is the barzakh, not the sweet and the salt water. In the field of embryology, Dr. William Campbell spent approximately half of his talk on that. Time will not permit me to reply to every small thing which are illogical. I'll just give a brief reply, which will be satisfactory, inshallah. And for more details, you can refer to my video cassette, Quran Modern Science, and my other cassettes on Quran and Medical Science. There were a group of Arabs who collected the data dealing in the Quran about embryology and the hadith dealing with embryology, and they presented it to Professor Kitmu who was the chairman and the head of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Toronto in Canada. And at present, he's one of the leading scientists in the field of embryology. After reading the various translations of the Quran, he was asked to comment and he said, most of the verses of the Quran and the Hadith are in perfect conformity with modern embryology. But there are a few verses which I cannot say that they are right. Neither can I say that they are wrong, because I myself don't know about it. And two such verses were the first verse of the Quran to be revealed, from Surah Ikra or Surah Alak, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ikra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalak. Khalak al insana min alak. Read, recite, or proclaim in the name of thy Lord, who created. Who created the human beings from something which clings, a leech-like substance. 
regarding Dr. William Campbell's statement that to analyze the meaning of a word, you have to see what was the meaning at that time when it was revealed, at that time when the book was written. And he rightly said that to analyze the meaning, you have to analyze the meaning at the time it was revealed and to the people who it was meant for. As far as this statement of his is concerned, regarding the Bible, I do agree with it totally because the Bible was only meant for the children of Israel for that time. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his disciples, Go ye not in the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, in the Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ and the Bible were only meant for the children of Israel. Since it was meant for them to analyze the Bible, you have to use the meaning of the word which was utilized at that time. But the Quran was not meant only for the Arabs of that time. Quran is not meant only for the Muslims. The Quran is meant for the whole of humanity. And it is meant to be for eternity. Quran says, in Surah Ibrahim chapter 14 verse 52, in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse 185, and Surah Zumar chapter 39 verse 41, that the Quran is meant for the whole of humankind. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 107, that we have sent thee as a mercy, as a guidance to the whole of humankind. So as far as the Quran is concerned, you cannot limit the meaning only for that time because it is meant for eternity. So one of the meanings of alaka is leech-like substance or something which clings. So Professor Keith Moore said, I do not know whether the early stage of embryo looks like a leech. And he went in his laboratory and he analyzed the early stage of an embryo under a microscope and compared it with a photograph of a leech and he was astonished at the striking resemblance. This is the photograph of a leech and human embryo. What Dr. William Campbell showed you is the other perspective of it. If I show this book, it looks like a rectangle. If I show you like that, it's a different perspective. <laughs> that diagram is given in the book. The diagram you show on the side is given there, and I'll deal with it, inshallah. Professor Keith Moore, after about 80 questions were asked to him, he said, if you would have asked me these 80 questions 30 years ago, I would not be able to answer more than 50%, because embryology has developed recently in the past 30 years. He said this in the 80s. Now, do we believe in Dr. Keith Moore, whose statement is available outside in the foyer, if video cassettes are available, this is the truth, unknown, huh? recorded statement. So will you believe Dr. William Campbell's personal conversation with Professor Keith Moore? Or the one mentioned in this book, with Islamic edition, as well as the photograph that I've shown to you. And in the video cassette available outside, you can see it. He makes those statements. So you have to choose which is more logical, personal discussion with Dr. William Campbell, or his statement on video, like how Dr. William Campbell showed my video. 100% proof what I said. Moon is reflected light, I'll come to it later on. And whatever additional information he got from Quran and Hadith, it was incorporated later into this book, The Developing Human, the third edition. And this book got an award for the best